Yeah, hello everybody. Um, today I like to show you the APC for Bitwig script, which is the support for the APC 40 controller from Akai in version 1 and 2. I'm showing here the version 2, but the version 1 is pretty the same with a difference of some knob namings and uh, some additional knobs. And you can read up in the wiki documentation what are the details of these differences. So how does the APC40 script work? Let's first start off with the navigation part. On the right upper part you have the play button, pressing play, starts playback, pressing it again, stops it. Pretty simple. If you use the shift and play button, you can uh, toggle the repeat mode, so the loop function for the arrange. Press it again to turn it off. If you press the record button, a record will be enabled. Press play to start recording. If you press shift and record, something uh, completely different will happen because you will create a clip which is ready for override so you can play into that clip and start recording in that clip. Pretty handy. What else do we have? You can enable uh, the metronome. So metronome is playing. Playback. Metronome playing along. Press it again to disable it. You can tap the tempo, let's go faster, or you can change it by one. And if you press the shift key, you can do it in finer steps up and down. And you can also use, let's stop the playback, you can also use the knob to change the temp tempo in steps of one. Or also if you press the shift button, in very fine-grained steps. To move in your song, let's go here, you can use the Q level knob, so if you move that, the play cursor moves as well. And if you keep the shift button pressed, you can do it very fine-grained as well. That was it already for the navigation. If you look on the left part, it's exactly also as you run it with, uh, with Ableton Live. So you have on the lower part, you have your, your faders for volume. The master fader is on the right. You have your volume faders here. On the lower part you can do a muting, so if you disable it on, you mute the track, everything muted, bring in the bass. And you can have solo as well, so this is a solo button. You can enable a track for recording, which happens also when you select it. The selection of a track are these one. So this one uh, selects the first track select the second track and so on. You can also use the arrow keys to move to the next one or the previous track. And if you step beyond eight tracks, it jumps to the next bank of tracks. So what else can we do if, uh, if you have a scene playing? You can stop the clip on a scene if you press the stop clip button. So let's stop the drums. And if you use the stop all clips button, all of the clips are stopping. You can change the different views with a detail view button. So this, press it again to go to the mixer, press it again to go to your editing, or press it again to be back at that view. So let's go to the mixer. So you can see if I change the panorama here, you can change the panorama for all of your tracks. And if you go to sense, Let's put that here away. So we can see the two sends. And now I'm on the first send. 
to select your send, so you have to keep the send button pressed and choose which one you want to have with uh, the track selection button. So let's press that one and you are now at the second send. And you can then can change the second send. So keep the send button pressed and choose one of the eight available sends. And if we use the user button, um, you can set uh, the, the user control. So for example, click right, say learn controller assignment, and then move the button and then you can control it button with this user assignment. So you have eight free controls for the user ones. On the right hand, you have eight device controls. And in Bitwig, you see the one, the colored ones are the eight parameters which are controlled by these eight knobs. So the first one is a pitch, second one is a shape here, and so on. And if you use the, the, the bank buttons, you can step through these and back again. So now we can control that one and so on. You also can navigate devices. So if we go to a track which has uh, some more devices on it, for example, like this, then you can navigate to the next one and back again. And if you have a cascaded device, for example, if we would have, um, let's create a new track. And on that one, put an instrument layer and add a layer here with a drum machine, add another one with a polysynth, for example. And let's select that one. And then you can navigate as well um, with these button, the layers. To go into one layer, you can press the shift button and the device right button. And then with the device buttons, you can change the layers. And you can even go in deeper. So now we're at the level of a drum machine. Then you can edit the parameters of the drum machine like this. And you can go up again with that button, go out of that device. This button turns the device on and off, the currently selected one. But this button does something completely different. This one is a quantization button. But to make quantization work, you have a MIDI clip in focus and selected. That's a limitation currently of the API, but I hope this will change in the future. This is already quantized. Let's move that to here. Then if I would press that one, everything gets quantized. I forgot something on the left here. Uh, there is not only uh, the normal functionality, you can also press the shift button here. And then uh, solo and the mute button can be used to enable and disable monitoring. So we have auto monitoring and a normal monitoring. Press the shift button. And with solo, you can disable and enable auto monitoring and with mute, you can switch off and on the monitoring. With the clip uh, device view button, you can show and hide the devices, so the lower part. And when you selecting tracks, you normally have the selection of the instrument ones and the audio ones but not the effect one. So if you want to edit the effect ones, you have to press uh, the bank button and then you're on the level of the effects. So now here we have the delay and the reverb and you can adjust the volume and also the other options and turn it off to go back to the normal tracks. All else we have, we have a crossfader. So for example, let's uh, set the first track to the left, so to A, and the second one to B. And let's have a clip playing. Let's turn that one down. So now can use the crossfader to go to left. Then I have only the drums and let's go to right. And you hear only the bass part. Uh, the drums are still playing because the 
uh, the drums have some reverb and the reverb is set still to both so you hear the reverb from the drums if you don't want this also you need to set the reverb to a so you have your normal clip functionality up here, up here you can start scenes start another scene you can stop individual clips let them play and you can also navigate here in that grid with your arrow button so you can scroll to right if you're at the end and you can scroll up and down as well that's the normal functionality you expect and you also have with ableton but there is much more to that script i put in most of the functionality you can also have from the push which is much more advanced so if you already have noticed if i press the shift button something is happening here as well so we have now five modes the first mode is the normal clip functionality and the second one is the play mode, you know, from the push. The only difference is that the buttons here are not uh, velocity sensitive, so you have a fixed value playing here. But nevertheless, it's quite usable. And the other limitation is that you only have five rows instead of the eights from the push. What you also can do is uh, you can change your scales. Uh, since it doesn't have a display, you see it on the computer screen, what scale you have selected. And the other thing here is that you can transpose it up or down. So maybe let's change to a different sound, which is better to hear. So let's go up and down again. The third mode is uh, the drum sequencer. So let's go to a drum kit. You have your normal drum grid layout with a limitation that you only have 12 drum pads instead of the 16th with the push. But the rest of the functionality is the same. You have here your currently selected clip playing and you also have the length of the grid and if you want to have more details about these modes you can also watch my tutorial videos about the push where i show that in much more detail what you can do with that with it basically you can play here the pads and you can also change the length of the clip if there would be a clip so you need to have a clip selected you can change the length so it's now two bars instead of one and you see up here uh, what is currently playing on that grid uh, on that clip so let's let's play that one you also see the notes lighting up and if that clip would be playing let's let's select the currently playing one you see where you're playing and you can modify it up there as well and you could also enable overdub the session key you can enable uh, overdub and then you could also play here turn overdub off okay and stop it also you can move the grid up and down the fourth mode this is a sequencer mode and you also see see it moving here what you notice it moves out of the view so it's bigger than the eight steps and you can use your arrow keys to move to the right and left to go back again and then you can also change the notes here and these are also in the currently selected uh, scale the scale can be changed here again and here you can transpose it up and down and the last mode is a so-called uh, rain sequencer which is a little bit experimental let's play an empty clip so you also need a clip playing to use that sequencer mode and activate uh, override and then you can do something like this uh, enable one and always when it hits the bottom one it makes a sound so you can do quite funny stuff with that it's especially pretty nice if you're having some kind of bell sound or a percussive sound so i think that was a quick overview of the functionality of what you can do with the apc40 scripts have fun using it and bye